hey, well, you know that's good. Let's go on. Okay, so tell me about this. Tell me about this junk sitting right here. So you see this cute little guitar? It's a. I do. Galatino. I've seen this one sitting here. I meant to ask you about that, but you were made in Italy. In the uh, 60s. It's a Galatino. Hey. Yeah, it's kind of an oddball guitar. Yeah, it's kind of strange this one looking. Had, uh, you know, it's it's had some modifications done to it, but it's it's pretty much all there. And oh, you just hold this together. These, yeah, yeah, yeah. This I'm was in a box and pieces, yeah. Because yeah. we're, we're still working on it. And one of the problems is it has a dead pickup. Well, check out that coil. That ain't your normal pull. Is this is this the fish paper you talk about? Yeah, well... Or a, it's, a it's, similar product to do the same a, thing? That's a cloth wrapping Okay. that they wrapped around the coil. Why did they do that? Is that an insulator they, or something? Well, yeah, it is okay. an insulator, but they also soaked it in a varnish to... Oh, yeah, you can see sort that. Of like, it's to tighten the coil up and to keep the coil from being microphonic. Okay. It's a rather unique way of winding a coil. What is what, only what is microphonic do. mean? What is microphonic mean? Uh, it means that if you tap on it, you can actually hear the tap coming through the electronics. Oh, okay, I got which you. Which is not good because it wants to feed back easier. It's more prone to vi it's more vibration prone. So yeah, and you don't want to do potting, that. Potting, wax yeah. potting, yeah, oh, or varnish potting. That's what does that mm, that, that dampen keeps that down. it dampens, I guess, yeah. the microphonics. Okay, and, but gotcha. some but some folks say that it takes away from the sound of the pickup. So you you have a uh, a completely different set of ideas there. So that whole pickup, everything you see, there, <laughs> there's the no microphone pickup, magnet and everything. Yeah. <clears throat> but the coil's dead, so I got to figure out how I'm going to pull that coil off and rewrap a coil similar to that with that tape or the with that that cloth tape and then varnish pot. So basically you're going to figure out how they made this restore that, yeah. and redo it. Yeah. I'm going to reverse engineer it and, and figure out how to so make it. So that's like one of the really cool things about your job. Right. Is I'm a detective. As much as you know, how you got to constantly be learning new shit because people are always coming in with something like you're like, or oh, what the old, hell is that? Or learning how they did the old stuff. <laughs> yeah. And, and maybe making it a little bit better well. on accident. Yeah. How cool is that? It's not truly worth fixing. Yeah. But we use it for templates and measurements. Oh yeah, okay. So this is the sixty five SG? That's the six that's the body for that neck. And we cleaned out the the busted part so that we have a clean route. Yeah, 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 yeah. To see what it looks well, like. Well yeah, the busted part was part of the neck. Right. So it was still in here and we got all that out. <clears throat> but Man, that's a ugly guitar. Yeah, well Who the hell painted that thing? Yeah. This is a this is a prime example of when people get involved in fixing things that they don't know anything about. Yeah, they break necks on a '65 SG and they painted an awful. Not only God, that, did you notice color. that they busted the headstock off of that thing too? No. Yeah. Let notice me... on the back of that headstock, it's got old, it's got two different colors of wood on it. Where is that? There it is. Oh. Flip it over the back. See, that's Man, got... yeah. She's been she's been road hard put up wet. Yeah. Big cracks right here. Oh yeah. yeah. She's been put back together eight or nine times. And there's <laughs> there comes a point where you have to say, uh, this one has rode its last rodeo. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you just gotta let them go to the grave and relax. They've ground oh. so much wood off the body, it's not even a normal SG <laughs> You know? Yeah. Tell me about this trumpet. Ah, that's kind of a neat piece. It's not a trumpet, obviously. It's a trombone. Well, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> You're absolutely right. You mean that's not a trumpet? Tell me about this sousaphone you got here. Sousaphone. Very funny. <laughs> Very funny. No, that's a, that's a, a legit trombone. And uh, what's interesting about it is that... I said it's not a guitar. <laughs> you can't. Yeah, it's definitely not a guitar. It's a 1953 F.E. Olds and Sons made in California. Okay. Okay. All right. 
decent old trombone. Yeah. Needs some work. That's yeah, true. needs but, some know, TLC. My job is to try and find this stuff. Looks like if you rub it, a genie will come out of it. It might. <laughs> Got enough brass. <laughs> That's uh. It's, but but a but a horn guy could absolutely go through this and make this. Uh, so is that like a brand and stuff that a, a horn guy's gonna go? Oh, dude. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I, as crazy as this may sound, because I've had several people go, oh, that ain't worth 50 bucks. And I'm like, you're an idiot. <laughs> because the French, the French will buy this, and I normally sell these on eBay for like $350, $450. Really? France, yeah. Uh, and, of course, I have to make them pay the shipping, but... Why, like, well, why are the French interested in these old reasons. USA, US California? US-made instruments. Okay, this, this has a neat feature. All right. You see how these flare out? I do right okay. here. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, obviously they do. Yes. Yep. They flare out. They don't do that on many of the uh, other modern instruments. Okay. All right. And it's kind of an important detail because it helps seal up the way this thing operates. Oh. Okay. Right now it's, it's yeah, rough. Need, it yeah, needs, it needs, it needs some <laughs> general straightening and. and <laughs> I can see it's got a few oil. It's got a few dents on it. Oh it? yeah, it's it's ugly. Yeah. Crazy as this may sound, it has no lacquer on it. And the French love that because they feel like the lacquer actually kills the tone of the horn. Oh, they right. like just the straight raw brass. They like straight raw brass. They love it. And when they find an old American instrument that looks like this, they just get crazy for it. There you go. And they'll take this thing apart, clean it, fix all the dents, you know, buff and polish it raw. And it'll still look beautiful, but it'll be raw. Yeah. And they're okay with polishing their horn every week. You know, they're, yeah. they're fine with it. So... I've seen some people, and that's got the original Olds, F.E. Olds and Son, a mouthpiece. It's written Olds right down here somewhere on this, in script. Let me see. Oh, yeah, right there. Can I see that? Yeah, it's hard to see because of the way it's engraved. Well, but it's there, though. Yeah. I can they'll see the take old. that mouthpiece, clean that okay. down, and uh, re-silver it. <clears throat> and, uh, Olds, O-L-D-S, Olds, yeah. yeah. F.E. Olds and Son. That's, really? Yeah. This oh, is, that's the whole. Yeah, that's, that's the, the name whole. of the company from the from that time period. Later on, they just became old. But uh, Effie Old and Son. I had a forty-seven. Wow. This is a fifty-three, but I had a forty-seven. Just just as nice as this, and it had a copper stripe around the bell, inlaid copper stripe, and it was all engraved. Effie Olds the Sons, California. Beautiful horn. Thousand bucks. I had a seventy-two Cutlass. <laughs> that one. <laughs> You got a 72 cut. And Olds. Olds. Olds Mobile cut. That's true. 